Will Johnson and Rusty Burson here with you. We are with Del Lindsay, a member of our 1999 College World Series baseball team. He's back in Aggieland to join us for this interview, and we certainly thank him for his time. And Del, let's just start by discussing that team. Uh, and people can have their opinions, uh, myself, Rusty Burson, but I mean, the 1999 Aggie baseball team may be one of the best we've ever seen on this campus. Absolutely. I actually think that it is. Uh, we During that year, we really looked up to the 89 team and their records and what they were able to accomplish. And, you know, we really sized ourselves up to those guys. And when you're so young, you don't really remember or think about that when you're in the process. But after after it's over, you go back and reflect and you can see, wow, we were able to accomplish many things. Like I had no idea that we broke their home run record mm -hmm. by 40 home runs mm -hmm. until I saw a highlight, a highlight video. Yeah. And mm -hmm. after the, this is months after the season was even over. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and looked up, looked at, looked at their team, sized ourselves up to them, and I was like, wow, the, you know, this is one of the greatest baseball seasons that has ever been played at Texas A&M. The one thing that I would do different is, is with our team, we had a goal of getting to Omaha. Right. We never talked about, let's win the whole thing. And, and me and John Sheshik have gotten together many times, and we still talk about what happened to us. We should have won it. We were the best team in the College mm -hmm. World Series. And I said, you know what, John, I've been thinking about this and kicking this around for years. And I said, the only thing I can think of is that we were in awe when we got there because that's where we had set our goal to be. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, we did not play like ourselves because right. we were still in shock that we had reached our goal instead of saying, no, this, we're not done. I'm guessing you recall the game against Nebraska. You went deep three times. No A&M players done it since then. But can you ever expect to arrive at the ballpark and have a day like that, no matter how much confidence you have? Absolutely not. Um, that is something that you're not even thinking about. You're just out there trying to get a good pitch and hit it hard. And that day was phenomenal. Actually, a funny story about that. My mother, when I was younger, told me that one day you're going to hit three home runs. And I said, you're crazy. That'll never happen. Um, no one can do that. You know, at this level, I'm not going to be able to do that. And she said, yes, you will. And so during the game, um, when I had two home runs, that was the only time that I've ever been on a baseball field and guessed what pitch was coming. Mm -hmm. and actually got the pitch and actually hit it out the park for the mm -hmm. third home run. Really? And I could not believe it. And when I got the home plate, when I was around the bases, all I could think about was her telling me <laughs> that because in many times in my career I'd hit two home runs in a game and never three. Was she there? She was absolutely there. Awesome. And when I hit the home – she was at every game. And so when I hit the home plate, I reached up into the sky and pointed to her in the nice. stadium because that was our moment because yeah. she had always told me that and I told her that would never happen. You didn't immediately get your Big 12 championship ring. That's right. So kind of give us the story. Why not? And then when you did, okay, how you got that ring? Well, the first, the first thing I want to say is the reason that I didn't initially get my Big 12 championship ring was it was all on me. It was my mm -hmm. fault. Um, that last semester while we were in the season, I wasn't going to class like I should have. Um, all due respect to Wally Groff and Coach Johnson um, and the, the whole baseball staff that was pr pushing me to go to go to class. I decided not to for a lot of you know reasons, thinking that I'm young, I'm going to go play pro ball. This is always you know I, I, I can come do this, I can do this, and this is just a stop in my journey mm -hmm. to the major leagues. Not really appreciating what was right in front of me at that age, so. Um, went to Wally when I came back, talked to him about the fact that I had not received my ring, took full responsibility for what I had done. You know, he, he was gracious to me and said, you know, Cordell, if you come back to school, then I'm going to honor this, but I want to put some fire underneath you to, to, to get this done. And I totally agreed. And um, after playing three and a half seasons for the Anaheim Angels, I actually came back to school, and it was it was uh, an amazing moment for me. After the first semester, I was at baseball practice. Coach Johnson let me help as a student coach, and we were out there helping the guys and and coaching. And Wally Groff shows up to the baseball field and pulls me to the side. I mean, he's in full athletic director gear, 
dressed like a professional and tells me that he's so proud of me and and presents me my Big 12 championship college World Series ring wow. at baseball mm-hmm. practice. And, I mean, it, 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 it was an emotional moment for me. Um, I was extremely proud of that. And um, after Wally left, um, Coach Johnson came up to me and told me that he was proud of me mm-hmm. and that in all his time at that point, I think that Wally had been to practice maybe one other time. Wow. <laughs> and that Wally came that day to honor his agreement with me, and I was so thankful for that. Did you realize, what, was it coming back when you realized how much A&M really meant to you? Because in the moment, you're just a baseball player, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, because that's what what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. You were a baseball player, yeah. almost like, okay, this is your, your stop. Yep. But when you came back, it seems like you realized, man, this is this is much more than baseball. This, there's something about Texas A&M. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think I fell into a gold mine. I didn't really know what I was doing. Thank God for people like John Sheshik and Coach Johnson that mm-hmm. steered me here. Um, I had no idea what coming to Texas A&M would mean to me in the long term. But now, and when I came back, I really appreciated. I had open arms extended to me, and these guys, you know, motivated me and helped me to finish my degree, um, Wally included. And then the the rewards of that struggle even though it was kind of you know tough coming back to school after playing for the angels and going through that grind of just being a student um the rewards were were tremendous i I tell people all the time i met the most important people that have been in my life after baseball right here at texas a&m awesome and i think you know you think about yourself sitting in wally groff's office and you haven't gotten your big 12 championship ring when you're young I think sometimes you can take that the wrong way and a young person can splinter Mm -hmm. from the entity that they feel has wronged them. Mm -hmm. Like, but the guy sitting here today could have regretted that decision had you gone that way. Absolutely. You know, the problem with people a lot of times is they have a problem and they want to push blame on everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I was not raised that way. Mm -hmm. Um, My mother and father were people that said, hey, you make a mistake, you're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. You're not you're going to finish what you start and you're not going to make any excuses. And so um, when all of this happened, you know, I looked at myself and said, you know, this is not anyone's problem but mine. Mm -hmm. I caused this. This is I don't I don't want Coach Johnson, Wally, my teammates, anyone to suffer from this but me. Mm-hmm. Because it was my mistake, so I took full responsibility of that, and it, it and it's good to have a good attitude like that because mm-hmm. then you can come back and you can say, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry, give me another shot, and then then you can really see the fruits of your mm-hmm. labors and get out there and do something with your life. How about mm-hmm. that other ring? The other ring that you're wearing. How about that Aggie <laughs> ring? This is the one that I wear even more so than my Big 12 championship ring mm-hmm. because I love my teammates and I and they mean the world to me. I would do anything for them. But having this ring, this is a dream come true. This is something that I never thought that I would ever accomplish. You know, when I was a baseball player, like you said, you're just a ball player. Right. I'm not thinking about getting my college degree. I'm not thinking about anything because baseball is so structured in a certain way that you're thinking about getting to the major leagues as fast as you can. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, coming back to school, I was able to realize how important Texas A&M was to me and all the people that I met with open arms, not only just at the school that helped me, but out here in the business world have really been influential and helped me with many things in my career now. 